All right, so this one says to use uh, using a series from two, or you know, several series from two if you need to. A long division, find the first four non-zero terms. Okay. So they give you, a, you know, one example using multiplication, e to the x times sine x. Um, I think they give you an example. This is too bad. Gross. Yep. Um, so you could do secant x is uh, one over cosine. Sure. And then cosine itself. Oh, and you can just look it up. Yeah. yeah. One minus square root over two factorial. Yeah. Pretty funky. And now it's hard to do, you know, long division on something that's already fractional, right? There's nothing to really divide into, right? So. Um, you know, what else could we try? Or, or let's see how it's going to say this. Um, yeah, how can I say? So the only, I think the only example of, they didn't even give us a long division example, did they? They just sort of said, doing long division. Uh, let's see, what did they give you to work with? Yeah, it's not until the next section, I think, that they do a long division example. So let's see, is there, is there another way, there's not really another way to get uh, cos, let's see, secant x to show up. Um, we just have to try to do the long division then? Well, I mean, all right, now, so let, let's see. Let's take the first couple of terms here. Here. So, I mean, can you actually do this division? So, if, I, if we have an example like, um, what is this? I mean, if you tried to do long division of 1 over x plus 1, it's not going to get you very far, right? It doesn't go in at all. And then you just have a remainder of 1 over x plus 1, so you're right back to where you started. Um, so normally, when you're going to do long division, you've got another series on top. Let me think. I don't want to do this one. Because they don't give us... No, that's right. Say, let's see. Know that, so we can't use that. We think, all right, let me think. So you've just, all you've got to work with are these. So I've got to bring it back down to all you know is, is this. So let's see, well, how, is there another way to build that? I don't 
think so. Not from these. I mean, that's another way to do it, but I was trying, to, I wanted to see if they gave you an idea of what to use on top. Um, so, I mean, let me think. No, that won't work either. Well, shoot. They don't really, yeah, we don't know enough to do it that way, so we have to do it. Let me think. I gotta think about that one. There's some stuff that we don't know yet that would make that easy, but now I'm trying to just let go of that. Um, or not easy, it would make it something we could do. Um, let me think. You must know enough to do this. Hmm. Yeah, you're not allowed to use, you're just supposed to use long division. Okay. That's too bad. I'm doing this. Let me think about it. My brain went to the wrong place to start with. There's an easier way to do it than what I thought of first because we don't know enough to do it that way. Um, yeah, it's just something simple I'm forgetting. All right, let me let me think about it. Hopefully it'll come to me before the end of the night. Which one is that? All right. Okay, I'll think about it. All right. Anything else I can put over, put off till later? Any other questions from homework? Everything else is okay. That one is definitely free. I'll agree. With you. But uh, I don't know what I am forgetting. What am I forgetting? Oh, oh, I'll let it go. Um. Okay. So anything else besides that one from yeah. homework? Can you do a 20 through 6.1? Oh, okay. So this one is the multiplication. This is and they give you the form of the functions that they want you to work with. Um, so this is going to be a lot like that example they gave you. Um, on the previous page. E to the x times sine of x. Now, Somebody came to my office the other day and was asking to explain where the coefficients came from. This is what you need to do. If I'm you, I'm going to go through the examples and make sure I see where they got stuff because they do skip a lot of steps because uh, they assume you just kind of fill in the blanks. And if you don't sit there and fill in the blanks, you're missing out on why things work the way they do. Um, so first off, uh, so I'm dealing with this guy. So cosine x I know. What would e to the negative x be? Well, what's e to the x? What's the... Taylor series for that. Yeah, so 1 plus uh, x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus blah. Right, so then what's e to the negative x? Yeah, just all the odd powers, of course, just become negative. All the even powers just eat that negative up. So now you just take this, 
and multiply it by this. Right. So you've got. You just have to go out far enough to collect enough stuff. So this isn't too bad. The nice thing is, but the power is constantly growing. It's not difficult. Like, like here I get one. Okay, that's nice. And then I get the next lowest power is minus x. And there's no other way to make an x. Do you guys see that? There's no other way to make just an x to the first power. So minus x. Now can I make an x squared? I can make an x squared twice. x squared over 2. And then minus x squared over 2. Do you guys, are you, so you step up in power, you kind of collect all the ways you can make uh, a constant, all the ways you can make x, all the ways you can make x squared. So you can start to do it now, of course, right there are the x squared terms. Cancel, all right, all right. So the x squared terms go away. Does everybody, do you guys see what's happening right now? This is exactly what they did in that example. All I am doing is distributing, right? What some crazy people call foiling, even though there's a lot more letters here than F-O-I-L, but oh well. All right, so one times one, and then that's the only way to make a constant. And then I got negative x times one, that's the only way to make an x. And then how can I make an x squared? Well, this times one and this times one, All right? So you're distributing, but you also want to keep the power levels? Yeah, it, it, to be honest, I mean, how do you guys do this? How do you guys do this? Yeah, I do x cubed. I do this plus 4x squared plus 2x squared. And, and see, I kind of naturally do that. I kind of collect, I go down in power. I don't do it in order. I, in, the natural, in the normal order they show you, I do it in the order of creating each degree. So I get grouped like terms. And I might do that because of this kind of thing, right? Because that's the way you have to do this. It's an infinite freaking thing. I can't let one go through forever. My God, I never get past that one thing. So the more, the smarter way to do it is to, how do I get constants? There's only one way. How do I get an x? There's only one way. How do I get x squared? A couple of ways. How do I get x cubed? Well, how do I get x cubed? I, this time is one. So I get minus x cubed over three factorial. Yeah, and x squared over two times negative x. So I get minus, or is it plus, sorry? Plus. X cubed, no, because it's over two. Yes, three factorials is three. Or, no, sorry, six. And then you can now, this is gone. You can get your, you can put those together, have a coefficient in front of your x cubed, keep going, right? And they said the first four non zero terms, right? So one, two, three, so I have to go up to the fourth power. So I should probably write the fourth, if there's a fourth power on here, right? You said you're trying to get the, as many of those terms each time? Like the all the ways to get that degree term. Does that make sense? All the ways to get that degree term. It's exactly the way I do this. Of course, here it's a lot easier because it's only, it's very odd. There's only one way to get x squared. I mean, two ways. x squared, x squared. Yay. How about x? That would be x times 1 and 2 times 4x. Not not fascinating here because it's not that much of a speed boost there, but still it's a little nifty thing to do. And there it's completely required because I can't let one have his turn all the way through because nobody else gets to go there, right? You'll you'll you can go as soon as I'm done. No oh, shit, right? Okay, maybe yes. So again, so it would be one way to do it is to do uh, this term times one, right? And another way to do it is to do uh, this times x squared. That's really the only way to get, the only two ways to get x to the third. Because all the other powers get too high after that. How, many, how do you get x to the fourth? One. 
Yeah, I can do this times one. I can do this times one. And I can do this x squared times this x squared. All right, I like it. So pretty much you always take these series out. You just give yourself enough room in case you have to put a few more terms out there. The first four non-zero terms and these died. I'm like, oh shit, I gotta get one more out than I would have had to. Say again. So how many times do you need Well, it said four non-zero oh. terms. So one, two, three, right? Three. Let's go put those together. So I gotta go to the fourth power, then I know as long as they don't cancel. So they do cancel, I gotta do the fifth power. Just because the instruction said go until you get four non-zero terms. I like it. Okay, cool. Doesn't really help you on the other problem, but I don't know. This multiplication is a lot more straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, because one um in both assignments it's just a simple like for the first one like e to the negative x, but it was just ln. So it was ln one minus x, and the the one that was given was one plus x, and that was just easier. Yeah, you can yeah you can just replace that and then just multiply away. I like it. So if you really look through that example, example two and really figure out where they got their coefficients. And you can see that's the way they do it. They don't explain it, but that's how they do it. So that's part of what you have to do is go, okay, here's an example. How they get from this step to this step? Oh, I have no idea. Shit, let me see what they did. That's really what you have to do. That's why you love it while the books have examples. There's a level you get to where they don't. Theory problems. Oh, shit. Okay, anything else from the homework stuff that I can, you now we get a 50-50 chance for me to do it and not. Observed frequency, no, okay. All right, I'm gonna let the back of my brain work on that other one. Hopefully something will happen. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried 6-2, have I post, did I post 6-2 yet? Okay, thank God. Um, I don't know if anyone's tried 6-2. I mean, that's the one we did a few examples of last time. I, I, did we finish that handout I gave out? Anybody need that handout I gave out? The one about theorem 6-2-1 is at the top. And it's got three problems at the bottom to do. Everybody else got that? Um, I think we did one like number two. And we talked about, and we basically did number one. I couldn't remember if we had done number three. Yeah. Did we do number three? I don't. Yeah. No, no, no. This guy. Uh, this guy. The one that's got theorem 621 at the top. It's got ordinary point. Bold at the top. You didn't mention it at the end. But okay, we haven't done it yet. Okay, let's do it since we got a quiz next time. I'm going to ask for you. Can we do that one? Okay. Um, So we have this here. Is that fine? So what do we assume the form of the answer to be? And and how do I know that they're and, and they do say that they're going to be around x equals zero. Mm -hmm. And what's got to be true about that point that I'm building this solution around? 
it's at the top. And then you got to remember what the definition is. It's going to be what kind of point? It's got to be an everyday, ordinary, ordinary point. And, and what's an ordinary point mean? Always find two independent So, what is the a two? What is the coefficient here? It's just a one, right? So we said if the if the coefficients are polynomial in nature then as long as this guy is not zero at the point we're interested in, then it's an ordinary point, because you're gonna divide by what it is. Well, this is the one, so it's beautiful. Is x squared analytic? What's analytic mean? So to be an ordinary point means that p of x and q of x are analytic at the point. The hell does analytic mean? Good. If it could be expressed as a power series centered around the point that I'm interested in. And sure enough, x squared, any polynomial is some kind of a very trivial power series, right? It's got one non-zero C, which is completely allowed. I need you to realize this. You're so used to Cn being, you know, n squared minus n, you know. But it can be uh, only for C2 is 1 and all the other ones are 0. That's completely allowed. Right? I love it. So that's completely analytic there. So the only place there could be a problem, if there was an x here, then that would be possibly a problem, right? Then you just divide. Yeah, you just divide, and actually in this case it'd be fine. So if there was an x cubed there, that would definitely be a problem, right? Okay. So by my, p, my q of x, p of x is zero. My q of x is analytic at zero, so everything's good. That's why I'm allowed to assume uh, form of the answer to be like this. So it's sort of related to that undetermined coefficients. We're assuming the form of the answer. Unfortunately for us, the form of the answer is this infinite series. Right? And we've seen that sometimes we'll do this and we'll come up with a series that we recognize, which means, oh shit, there was probably another way to do it. This is sort of the general way to do it. Some problems like this one, this is the only way you can do it. But other problems, you know, you can do other ways and get nicer answers. Okay, so then what do I do from here? Now that I know it's an ordinary point, because it's uh, the Q of X is analytic at that point, therefore I should be able to find a solution like this, at least one. Yeah, start to uh, try to fill this in, just like we did before. So what's y prime going to be? C sub n times x minus 1. And what should happen here? It should be 4. Yeah, and it's just, again, it's just because 0 gives you 0. So this is going to be? C sub n times n minus 1. n times? n minus 1 times. All right, so notice the unfortunate thing here. The, well, when we plug these in, it's going to take our powers off even more than they currently are. Right? I don't know if you guys, because what are we going to eventually be worried about? The indices and the powers, trying to make them like terms and trying to make the indices match so they can go together in one big summation. Trying to stuff them all together in one big summation. So the only way you can combine summations is if their indices agree. And the only way inside you can combine what you get is if they're like terms. So that's why you get those two kind of things you have to take care of. We've done that a few times now. Uh, so when I plug this in, I get sum n equals 2 to infinity and n minus 1 and n minus 2 plus x squared times y. So what's it going to be? Sum n equals 0 to infinity cn x to the Yeah, n plus 2. You're just multiplying two more x's in there. Why am I allowed to stick x squared into the summation symbol? Because the only variable that's not allowed to go in and out of the summation symbol is, is n. It just doesn't have n. 
Yeah. So it's just like integrals can have x's go in and out, but constants can go in and out all day long. So according to the summation, x squared is constant. Uh, equals zero. So now we shift our attention. Now that we got those plugged in the right place, we got the x's kind of put together. Now we worry about getting the indices the same and getting the powers the same. So it, there's a few different ways to do this. Um, if you get, so uh, let me ask you, where do you want to start? Do you want to try to get, to make this n equals 2, it would be easy, just chuck off a few of these, but then what do I have to do to get the powers the same, though? That's probably where you should start, because then making these the same is easy. Whoever's smaller, you just take a few terms off of it. So how do you get the powers to be the same? That's one way I could do it. All right. all right, all right, so let's do this. When n equals 2, what's the power here? Zero. And when n equals 0, what's the power here? Two. two. All right, so it, several different ways you could do this. You could try to make them both match up at n, right? Or you can take 1 and make it go to n plus 2. You can take the other one. Which way? Do you guys want to do it? Which way did I do it? Oh, that's interesting. I like that. I like that way. Oh, okay. Yes? Totally. And like I said, you can use the textbook K stuff if you want to. I personally hate that. I really do. It's just so unnecessary. But if you like it, or if you feel like it's, you know, required, because the textbook said so, do it. I love it. But I really want you to see, all we're doing is shifting. We're not really changing truly anything. We're sort of going back and saying, no, I don't want it to start at zero. I want to start at this point. So why do I have to make it a different letter? Do you understand? So this is sort of my own personal thing, and I don't care. I like that way, so I'm going to show you. Now, the book shows you in a different way. You can do it that way if you want to. If it makes more sense, especially, do it that way. Hell yeah. Let's try to make them both x to the n, just because. So if this is 2, and when this is 2, this is 0, how do I make this x to the n? What would this have to start at, then? No, no, no. If this starts at 2, I get a 0 here. Uh, think about it this way. If I want this to be x to the n, and I, so what do I want the first value up here to be? Well, it's got to be what it is. What's the first value up here? Zero. Zero. So if I were to put an x n here, I better start at? Two. Zero. Zero. What's the first, when I put it, the first value in, what do I get? x to the zero. Now when I put a zero in, what do I get? x to the zero. All right. So now what's the consequence for everybody else? So you can do it one of two ways. You could do it, I kind of like doing it this way, and this way is actually probably the harder way, but oh well. Uh, n equals two is a two there. Now n equals zero, I want a two to show up here, so what do I have to put down here? n plus two. So some of you guys might realize, how do I make this into just n? I'll replace it with n plus two. So I just replace all the n's with n plus two. If I make all the n's, all, if I make all of these two bigger, if I add two to all of these, I better make the first value two less. Yes? Yeah, but that kind of is like the cake method. It, it is. It totally is. But I don't need freaking cake. That's yeah, my point. You can just That's make, my point. So Why would I make it look like it's all new? It's not new. I'm just going, let me change my values of n. Um, so this becomes n plus 2, this becomes n plus, one. n plus 1, and then I got my x to the n like I like. Now how do I make this x to the n? I got to replace all my n's with n minus, minus two. 2. So when n is 0, now this is why I kind of do both at one time, because you got to be careful. When n is 0, I get a squared up here, right? 
So now I want an n, so n's got to start off at 2. All right. So you see how we kind of switched? But the indices are easy. If it's only the indices that are off, you just chuck a few terms off the one that's low. Or how many terms you need to make a match up? Yes? What do you mean chuck them off? Yeah, plug a zero in, put that term over here, plug a one in, put the term over here, and now they both start at two, yeah. Okay. yeah. And they're already like terms. That's why generally I like to make the like terms happen first, because then it's easy to make the indices match. So what I end up in with in here? Yeah, C sub n minus two, because it's zero, so now when I plug a two in, I better get zero, and you could also think of it as replacing n with n minus two. So if there's any computer programs out there, you probably don't like that. And that's probably like, if you're a computer programmer, you might drift towards K. Any computer programmers on any? A little bit? This is sort of like saying, you know, let X equal X plus one or something. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a little bit iffy, but oh well, I don't give a shit. It works the same way. Uh, equals zero. And now I can, can I put these together yet? No, I have to do like we said earlier, right? When N is zero, what comes out? When n is zero, I get C2, two times one, x to the zero. What? Is everybody cool? All right. And then when n is one, I get C3 times three times two, six. So then I get plus sum n equals 2, because I there's n equals 0, there's n equals 1, and then the rest are 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, the, 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 the x. X, I think. X to the first value. Bam. And then I get sum up to infinity. Same stuff here. Let me see if you guys can handle this. Now I can go ahead and put this in here, because they're both controlled by the same summation, right? So I got this piece here, x to the n. Oh, the reason I'm not to put the x to the n, you'll see it in a minute. Plus cn minus 2, and then I've got x to the n. That's why I needed like terms. Why is the cn outside? It's not outside the summation. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to be careful, you can put it here. So then, so what do we have as a consequence of this now? Let me see here. What's got to be true? In order for this whole, in order for this sum to be zero, I, I, I want you to realize I can't have this plus this be the same thing as this because it's got to be zero for all choices of x. So what's really got to happen is this sum has to be zero on its own, and then this has to be zero on its own. I like it. If it was being multiplied, that'd be a different story, right? Like if you're multiplying the summation. Oh, okay. Well, then thankfully, that would not happen to us yet. You can imagine the type of DE we haven't touched is what if I had uh, Y double prime times Y prime minus Y equals 6X or something. Yeah. Then that kind of thing might happen, right? Here we've got our nice, our derivatives kind of all separated. Thank God. We're not going to get a multiplication of two sums. I like it. Now you could also have like a functional coefficient that you want to expand as a you want to write as a power series, and then that will be multiplied. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Close okay. To but these would never multiply. Yeah. Um, okay. So what do we got? We got c sub n plus two times n plus two n plus one plus c n minus two equals zero. Because x could be whatever it wants to be. 
within whatever interval this ends up working. And then we also have 2C2 plus 6C3X equals 0. So from this, we see that C7 plus 2 equals negative C sub n minus 2 over n plus 2, n plus 1. See, I always solve for the later coefficient. You see what I mean? The one that occurs later? This one occurs four places before this one. I'm going to have the later one based on the ones that happened before it. Oh, oh, and there's a really nice thing. It's even better here than I said. Because of this x here, I keep forgetting that x is there. This has got to be, so it's not, in general, there won't be an x here. Sometimes there won't be an x. Most of the time there's actually not an x. And then these have to add up to be zero. But since x can be anything it wants to be, for much the same reason that this is separately zero, because it's got an x thing attached to it, these have to be separately zero also. There's really no way to make those always zero for any choice of x except if C2 and C3 are zero, and we don't want to assume the trivial solution right now. We want that to happen if it's the only way. Uh, so that means that 63x and 2C2, well, actually, here you can see it happen. Well, it's got to be true about C3 and C2, then. They have to be zero. Because X can be anything it wants to be. X can be anything it wants to be. So the only way to make that zero is if the constant there is zero, so it always kills it no matter what it's trying to be. I like it. So we got this. Thank God. Now, now one little thing about these is C0 and C1 will basically always be free. They'll always be just whatever you want them to be. And, and there's two different ways to do this. And one example in the book says choose uh, C0 equal to 0, C1 equal to 1, and then they say, now choose the other way around, uh, which is perfectly valid, but a slightly better way to do it. And to me, I think it seems less like it's cheating to a student um, is to just start using this guy. Uh, the lowest n can be here is 2. Is that cool? Do you guys see that? Because we've got to start at C0, right? So for n equal to 2, what do we get? C4 four equals negative C0 over, this is n equals 2, right? 4, four times 3, 12. And then keep going. What's really nice is, uh, like last time, we'll have a lot. So for n equals 3, C5 will be negative C1 over 5 times 4, 20, n equals 4. I know this is all foreign to you. You haven't really done much of this. You've done a little tiny bit of something like this, but it's sort of like writing a, transforming a series written piece term by term into a summation, and you had to figure out the pattern. This is actually a little less ambiguous than that. The pattern is defined for me. I just have to plug stuff in. Uh, if n is 4, I get c6 equals negative c2 over 6 times 5, 30. But well, what's negative c2? Oh, what's c2? Zero. Yeah, c2 is 0. So c6 is 0. And so n equals 5, yeah, and so forth, right? Uh, let's see, how far did I make it out to? Not very. Well, let's do, let's do one more. So this will be c7 equals negative c3 over 7 times 6, 42. 
C3 is not zero. It's one more, one more non-zero one. So C8 equals uh, negative C4 over uh, where do you, 8 times 7, 56. C4 was negative C0 over 12. So you get C0 over uh, 60 and 112 is 672. Maybe. I don't know. You guys can either trust me or you can check me. Now, thankfully, thank God, I will tell you like how many terms you go out to, you don't. Because otherwise you're like, am I supposed to find a pattern? Am I supposed to? Uh, sometimes there won't be a pattern, and I'm just not going to force you. And if I have a problem where it's supposed to match up with a known series, I will give you that table, and I will tell you, your answer should match up with one of these series. Figure out which one. And that means there should be an easier way to solve the EDE. If I'm you, I'm going to do it that way first, so I know what to expect. So y equals, what we do in this case is we write it term by term for the first few terms. Uh, y equals, uh, what do I have here? Where do you go? C0 plus C1, I don't know. C0 plus C1x. Are you cool with that so far? C0 and C1 are just whatever they want to be. Were they defined anywhere? No. C2 and C3 are zero. Everything else is based on C0 or C1. So those two are the ones that score, like, like I said before, the Fibonacci sequence. You, Fibonacci like, you start with two numbers and you add them to get the next number. The first, the C's, the ones you start with, can be anything. Uh, then what do I get? What's C2? Zero. So I get zero times x squared. And C3 is 0. <clears throat> and then C4 is negative C0 over 12. So I get negative C0 over 12 x to the fourth. Do you, guys, do you guys see this is a homogeneous differential equation, right? And it's degree or, or order 2. So I expect to get two solutions to it. So all the C0 stuff that I'm getting, those are the elements that are in Y1. All the C1 stuff I'm getting are the elements in Y2. OK, good, good, good. See, it's all coming together. I love it. Uh, what are we at? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. C5 was 0. I love it. 0 times x to the fifth. And C6 was C0 over 672, of course. So you could tease out y1 looks like it's uh, 1 minus 1 12th x to the 4th plus 1 over 692 x to the 6th. And it looks like for y2, I'm going to have to go, I would have to go out some more to see some more terms for it. Did you skip n equals 3? I might have. Did I? Yeah. Um, y5, 0. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I put the C6 in that place. Ah, of course I would, because it's way over there, Jeff. So one, zero, one, two. Yeah, I don't think that's wrong. C3 is zero. C4 is negative C0 over 12. C5, here we go. Yeah, C5, that's when I was looking at n equals 5, of course, Jeff. C5 is negative C1 over 20. All right, that's better. So then that means that this has at least one more minus x to the fifth over 20. Feel a little better about that. Dot, 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 dot. Now there could be, uh, there could be a way to write this as a summation symbol, but you have to give yourself a few more, and I'm not going to make that uh, another level of this. You guys might remember doing that in 280. We had to come up with a pattern for the summation. Yeah. This is enough work, I think. Right? And I don't want you to go insane going too far with this. I mean, it will go to C, y, I mean, y1 and y2. Like, right All 
the C0 stuff. So it's sort of like YC equals C0 Y1 plus C1 Y2. That's kind of like the natural consequence of this procedure. So all the C0 stuff is the Y1. I like it, I like it, I like it. All right. All right. Let's see, was there anything else there? No. Okay. If I were you, I would try to do some of the examples in the book on my own and then compare what I did with what they did right? and see if there's anything that I went wrong with before I start trying to do the homework. Okay. Um, 6.3 I do want to talk about, but I, I, I almost don't want to say this before I start talking about it. I was going to make the homework in 6.3 extra credit, but I still want to talk about it because it's a really interesting idea. I just don't want to focus so much on it because we've got to get into Laplace transforms. They're a little bit more important than poor little 6.3, right? I'm not saying you're not important 6.3. Just saying compared to Laplace, you guys have ever heard of Laplace transforms? I can't remember what other course they show up in. They don't show up in Calc 3, no. Where would you guys do Laplace? Anybody do Laplace already? Was it in a... Anybody, or you just heard of it? You've heard of it, okay, okay. I like to see your hands up. Heard it, somewhere. okay. All right, so uh, real quick about 6.3. Let me start off with uh, something that's not, well, screw it. If something's not practical, then I don't care. All right, it's kind of interesting. It, it kind of shows you a different way to look at a Laplace transform, and then we'll talk about Laplace transform itself and how we're going to use it. There's a lot of different ways to use it. In fact, there's a lot of what's called integral. This is seven one by the way. Integral transforms. So an integral itself transforms one function into another. Derivatives transform one function into another. Are you guys with me on this? Sure enough, if you feed a function into a derivative, most of the time a different function comes out. Right? There are just a few functions where the same thing comes out. Okay, I like it. So, that's a little um, unsatisfying though, right? Because you're like, oh, big deal. We, we... Yes, it's Jeff, that's true. But um, So an integral transform is something that looks, most of the time looks something like this. Uh, oh, which form do I want to put it in? 7.1 Seven one. Yeah, okay. Alright, so, so I just want to put that there. Since I'm saying integral transform, I want to show you what it looks like. This is called kernel. If you take it linear, it's not the same thing. Uh, now, here, before I write down what the Laplace transform, the Laplace transform is a specific type of integral transform. Uh, Fourier series transform. Anybody ever heard of Fourier series transforms? Fast Fourier series transforms. Uh, that's one example. Uh, it is a different type. Uh, it's got a certain function that goes here that is its kernel, and it is used in frequency um, and analyzation and stuff like that. If you've ever heard of, if you've never heard of that, of the Fourier series transform, you really should look it up. F O U R I E R. The way I write. Well, Google can maybe guess what you're trying to put in there. Um, so here's something really kind of nifty. I, I, I really love this way of looking at things. And so here we have a power series. If I say, if I tell you, this should make complete sense, a power series is a discrete transform. It's discrete because it has n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2. Right. And you got this little, you got these, it's a function of n, and then x to the n. So here's something kind of nifty. Uh, 
You can say this about more than just the Laplace, but let's just focus on Laplace. The Laplace transform is the continuous analog to this. It's kind of nifty. So the Laplace transform says, okay, I'm gonna have an integral instead of a sum. And we're used to that since the days of good old Riemann. And instead of a discrete function distribution, I'm gonna have some continuous function distribution. That's this guy. Some some uh, the same distribution. Some uh, discrete, uh, some continuous function of a variable. In this case, t. Because most often the Laplace transform takes a time-dependent thing and transforms it into something else. We're not going to actually look at that to begin with because it's just a pure mathematical object. That's normally how it's used in in the sciences. Um, and so this would be x to the t. Dt. Now now. This isn't the Laplace yet. If I let, or if I, let's see if you guys remember this. I can write this as e to the ln, uh, where'd it go? x, t, right? You guys remember doing that weirdness? Because e to the ln x is just. Yeah, so this will just be e to the ln x is just x, and this is to the t, so it's just this same thing. I like it, I like it. And then, the last step is let negative s equal ln x. So then you end up with this. This is the Laplace transform. That is very anticlimactic, I know, but here's the idea. Why do we transform? Like, for example, one really simple transform, or, or a general class of transforms is to take a problem in algebra and transform it into a problem in geometry. Actually, so, you, so very simply, you could uh, draw the lines that represent systems of, of equations, and then the solution is just finding where the lines meet instead of doing it algebraically. Are you, are you kind of with me? So normally we try to take, if we can take a problem, tra 